Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. You came back for Article 4 of the Constitution, full faith and credit as we continue knocking them down with the um, Constitution for Dummies series. So whether you're in uh, middle school, high school, college, or cray cray on the internet, we're going to lay it out, give you some examples, and uh, give you a solid in terms of learning. So there you go. I'm ready to teach you. You're ready to learn? Giddy up. Here we go. All right, so we start with basically the first section of Article 4. There's four sections, and this is where it gets its name from. It's called Full Faith and Credit because Section 1 states, Full faith and credit shall be given in each state to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. So on ground level 1, this means that if you have some type of contract, legal proceeding, a driver's license, a marriage, a divorce, an adoption, that that proceeding is going to be legitimatized or be upheld in other states. So if I marry my bride at the age of 16 in West Virginia, I'm still married when we move up to uh, uh, New York where the age is 18. Or if I'm driving in Utah with a driver's license from California, I'm solid with that. It gets a little bit more gray as we kind of fast forward to the 21st century and we have some states that have legalized marriage between two men or two women. What we would call gay marriage, but in these states that marriage is no different than any other marriage. So what happens when you take that marriage certificate between two men or two women from New York and you move to Alabama? And right now Alabama isn't recognizing that marriage. So this used to be taken care of the Defense of Marriage Act signed by Bill Clinton back in 96 or DOMA, but recently the Supreme Court knocked that down. So we're kind of a little bit of gray area, but if you're trying to apply Section 1, Article 4 to something that's controversial or something that is in the news, that's where I would drive that train to. So let's look at Section 2. So, Section 2 is the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all the privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. And this has been interpreted to mean that um, if I am Utah, I can't discriminate against a person in my state because they're from California. I can't make it harder for him to um, get a loan or to vote or whatever the state mandate or law would be that would be discriminatory. There's also a couple... Uh, well, not ugly things, but the first one and the second one's a little bit ugly, of course. But basically, there's an extradition clause in Section 2. Um, persons that are charged with treason, felony, or other crimes at the request of the executive of that state can be extradited. So if I commit a Literally, it says other crimes. So if I steal a Twinkie in, you know, uh, uh, Nevada and I run to Colorado, that Colorado's uh, executive or governor would order me back to the state where that crime was committed. The kind of the third dot in section two is like a fugitive slave clause that literally says that people that are held in bondage and servitude, if they escape to another state, that they're still in bondage and servitude and that they should be returned upon request of the person that's been harmed, not the slave, but the slave owner. And that was slid in and it got passed and later that would be expanded upon by the 1849-1850 uh, Fugitive Slave Act giving it more enforcement power but that ugliness is certainly in the Constitution or it was and that was nullified with the uh, 13th Amendment. Let's look at the next section which is about states and territories. Alright guys, so Section 3 of Article 4 deals with new states giving the permission specifically to Congress to regulate the admittance of new states. And as long as these new states aren't being illegally formed out of old states, the process is pretty clear and Congress is going to set the guidelines. Um, it gets a little bit hairy during the Civil War when Virginia leaves the Union and uh, the people of Western Virginia kind of object to this and apply for new statehood under the flag of West Virginia and are given that uh, are granted that permission to do that kind of flies in the face of Section 3, but of course realizing Virginia left the Union makes it a little bit more hairy. All right, let's look at Section 4. Um, another thing about Section 3 would be territories. There's also language in there that gives Congress the ability basically to rule over territories because they're not states, they're kind of like uh, in the midst of the middle. 
All right, so when we look at um, section four, we're looking at the guarantee clause. It states that the United States shall guarantee to every state in the union a Republican form of government. It goes on to say we will protect them from foreign invasion, and if the legislature demands it, if Congress wants it, or if Congress is not available, it even mentions the executive, that we can protect them against domestic violence. This really becomes kind of clear during and after the Civil War. Um, during the Civil War, this is going to be one of the justifications Lincoln kind of has at his fingertips to kind of squash what he sees as domestic violence in these states, this domestic insurrection, that the states never left the Union, that they have citizens that are in rebellion, and using Section 4 of Article 4 of the Constitution, it gives Congress, which is the Union Congress, and the Executive Lincoln, the ability to squash this domestic insurrection. And of course, if it was a foreign insurrection or if a um, aliens invade Alabama, Section 4 would give the President and Congress the ability to protect uh, Alabama from aliens. But what I really want to talk about is the first section, the Guarantee Clause. And this is going to be used by the radical Republicans to argue for really the ability of them to regulate the new governments in the South. Um, this doesn't get brought up a lot because really people in the South and kind of historians that are looking at a kind of a direct interpretation of the Constitution see radical Republicanism and the control of the Southern states as really kind of tyranny, as forcing them to do things against the will of their citizens citizens, like adopt the 14th Amendment and the 15th Amendment. But what the radical Republicans are relying on, whether you, you object or you don't object, this is their argument, is that because of the Guarantee Clause, um, these governments down south don't recognize African American citizens. And if they don't recognize these people as people, they're never going to be able to represent them and therefore their Republican form of government is, a, is invalid. Giving Congress the ability to guarantee this Republican form of government through what they see a Republican form of government being. And of course the kind of the slippery slope or the magic bean in all of this is what is a Republican form of government. So you guys can argue about that to the cows come home, but that's section 4, article 4 of the Constitution, and that wraps it up. So there you go, guys. That's Article 4 of the Constitution. We got full faith and credit. We have citizens' rights. We have the Guarantee Clause. We have extradition. We have, what, the fugitive slave kind of concept in there. It's cray cray for learning. Guys, why don't you click the button right there if you haven't subscribed and hook up a teacher and subscribe to Hip Hughes History. Your brain will grow even faster when you press the button. And certainly check out the description below. We have a whole list of EDU gurus and channels for learning on the YouTubes so you can kick whatever you want in life's behind. So there you go, guys. We'll see you next time where attention goes, energy flows. Giddy up for learning.